Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. No surprises here, crypto has been down about 50% overnight. We had a massive live stream, 21,000 people online last night. Thank you very much for stopping by and joining in on the fun and the tears with us last night. If you haven't, make sure to hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, like the content up. Today, we're going to be looking at what we checked out last night, recapping it, and then covering some of the videos on the channel over the past couple of days to give you an idea of areas of support, resistance, what we could have done, and what to look for moving forward. Now, I want to pay particular attention to a few videos from the channel discussing strategies uh, should we see these situations occur again. I do discuss profit taking. I do discuss consolidating into stronger projects. This isn't a favorable look at the markets or a favorable decision at the time. People definitely want to have a go at whoever's saying they're taking profits. But now that we've been through a very emotional wreck in the cryptocurrency markets, you're probably wishing that you did take some profits. So if that's you or you want to understand, definitely stick around for this video. We're going to check those out on the charts and in those videos specifically talking about areas that I had been looking at for profit taking and consolidating. So. Let's dive in. Two big pieces of news for the day. That's what we're going to start with. There's plenty of it out there. I've got here the manipulation. So there's a big viral tweet going around about Bitcoin being manipulated. You've been following the channel for some time. You know that we've been seeing a price decline. Now, I will admit I was not expecting 30k hit. This article claims to have hit, said that the Bitcoin will hit 30k and doing it before it comes in. I still would not be basing my trading upon an anonymous thread on 4chan. There's no way to continue to trade that long term. But nonetheless, it's an interesting read. It's here on my Twitter. If you don't have a Twitter account, make sure you sign up for a Twitter. If you do, go and follow me on Twitter. We post uh, a lot of stuff about cryptocurrency news, updates, charts, and of course, the uh, property cycle as well. The other piece of news for the day is cryptocurrency exchanges that were down through the crash. So if you don't have multiple exchanges to use, make sure you use the, well at least use the links down below if you're Australian. I've got CoinSpot and SwiftX, my preferred exchange. The links are down below in the description. Basically, look at all these exchanges that went down. Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, all reporting technical issues. Yes, they possibly had technical issues because there was an influx of people buying and selling and trade orders going off. So they're probably not all saying it for the sake of it to screw people, but their systems probably just could not handle the overload in that wild, wild crash. Uh, as you can see here, pretty much a lot of the majors were down, Voyager down, Binance uh, temporarily suspended for their leverage trading, and uh, the rest of them here, Winklevoss, Gemini's, we've looked at those, Coinbase, crazy, crazy times. All right, <clears throat> to the mark caps, 1.5 trillion. Now we wanna see a support come in soon, Speaking with some others in the industry, we're looking at a $1.33 trillion market cap to hold a support around a 50% level. So these are the important times for us to be looking at holding the market. Where is the money flowing to? That's what we want to see here. The dominance has increased to Bitcoin, but the overall market cap now is a hell of a lot lower than it was before. This is something that we have been tracking. So it does look like money is flowing out at the moment. It's not going into tethers. It's not going into USDC coins. It's... Uh, it's flowing out. That's not a great sign, but let's keep looking at the charts and following on from here. Now let's take a look at a few videos from the channel. Uh, these are from the last couple of days, looking at Ethereum, Cardano, Bitcoin, in particular around timeframes where I was looking at potential peaks. Cardano right here, uh, Ethereum also in this video, especially against the Bitcoin pair. And then like you know, we've talked about Bitcoin many, many times over the last month about this potentially being a very severe correction. At the time, I did see it as a big severe correction because we had 11 straight days down. This is a, a big thing in the markets. So looking at Ethereum in this video here, at around the 35, 36 minute mark, I'm talking about time frames and the length of the time frames topping out in the market. We've seen a very similar repeat of a time frame. We've got 61 weeks up from the bottom to the top in Ethereum. Previously, in the 2017 run, we had 57 weeks, so very similar time frames, and then we had a big correction in 2017. Now, I don't know if we're going to get a big correction, a two-year correction. I definitely hope not, but hope's not enough to support the market at this point in time. 
Uh, if I am looking at breaking down the time frames, so going from 61 weeks, I'll next be looking at around 28 to 30 weeks in terms of how long it's going to take as a recovery period for Ethereum before it breaks to the all-time high again. So I potentially am looking at around that six-month area. And I know it's a long time frame and we could turn around from this point, but at least I've got an idea in mind so that if the market continues down, I'm not going to get bored because I have an idea in mind of how long this might take. That's where people will lose and not make any money is because they'll get bored and leave the market. So please don't do that. If you want to stick around, make some cash, stay with the markets, even when it gets boring, the boring times and when the money is made. Next video is on Ethereum, again, discussing the timeframes posted on the 18th. So two days ago, just explaining these and then also timeframes, uh, price ranges of where I could expect some support. I was looking at 22 to 2300. I was not thinking 2K would break, but if it did break, as I've said here, then I would expect it to bounce back above and at least get into the 2000 to 2400 range to get support. The wick down is okay, but we definitely don't want to see it start to form a consolidation in the $1,000 ranges, so 1000 to 2000 range, then things are getting really dire. We want to stay above the 50% levels and also the old support levels. So <clears throat> that's that video here. What is a good pri uh, buy price for ETH? Check that one out. So there are some things which I'm not a hundred, well, I didn't get a hundred percent, but remember we're just looking at probabilities here, and so that we have a plan so that we stay safe. And the other one here, Cardano, looking at a top right here uh, against Bitcoin, third of April, and I'm looking at a top, at least an intermediate top. We have a few signs to show us that this could be an intermediate top, just like I talked about on the 27th of February when I put a video out. Check it out on the channel, selling some Cardano there. What happened? So. That's what we're looking at for Cardano, Bitcoin, also time frames, price ranges, signs of weakness. We've covered all of this before. Let's have a look at the chart. I've got Ethereum up here and we did spike down to 1850. We now, now are recovering, we're around 2400. So this is a first good sign. We don't want to see this come back down and test that low. Uh, that would be very, very weak signs, especially if it was on high volume, broke and closed below it. That's not a good thing. Uh, Ethereum so far is looking okay. We will have to update this again probably later today or tomorrow. The main one I wanted to mention to you is Bitcoin. We've just come back above 38k, so this is a good sign. And we are flirting with the 50% uh, 50 level, closing just slightly under it and now moving above it. Volume is okay. So I'm liking this as a pretty good spike down, which is very, very similar to something that happened in the COVID crash. Before I get to that, to explain that, uh, what I wanted to mention here is the plan did work well. <clears throat> what to do next time? I've got these levels here. These are not areas that I'm buying the dip on every time, as explained in the live stream last night. This was a good, a good area to be buying up again. It was a solid dip. These are not solid enough dips. If you hear it online, check a chart. Make sure you go and check it against a chart. This volume is dying out. These dips are getting higher. If it doesn't get a big volume break to the upside, it's a dead move, a very dead move. And we notice that we have a video on the channel, April 18th, calling for the market to have a, a correction. I did not know it would be an 11 straight days, days down. I did not know we would go to $30,000, but this area was looking extremely weak after the volume just continued to dry up as the market went higher, sucking in retail. So the next thing is the weekly chart. What to do? How to? How could we have seen this? This is all in the Investor Accelerator course, which you can find a link to in the description down below. Weekly swings, how to calculate them, what to look for, how to exit, all in the membership course down below. 12 months membership and you join a group to understand and to learn along the process. Weekly swing lows, you can see how I've circled that. The breakdown on the 18th, 19th broke that low. That is an exit at 49.50k. Market went up again, have to suck it up. Then the market fell and crashed back through the swing bottom of two of these uh, weekly swings. That is another signal out of the market. Now, the market might go up and not give you another signal to get back in until the 60s, and you just have to suck up the opportunity costs losses through that point there. But that's going to keep you safe when the market falls. Was I selling? That's a big question. Yes, I was selling into some stable coins. Yes, I was rotating some of my profits. My altcoins, as I've talked about many times, this is not the first time you should be hearing this, but selling them into Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin did fall, but I want to consolidate my crypto holdings into altcoins, which I can stomach through a bear market. Ethereum is one, Bitcoin is another. So gains out of some of the cryptos can sell those back into some of the bigger cryptos, which did still have big losses. But that's my strategy because I don't see the, bull, uh, the Bitcoin bull market or the cryptocurrency bull market done long term. This could be another 12 months or 24 months from here until we get to another peak. We could be down for six months as explained in this video here talking about time frames as well. So if you haven't already, check this video out, Bitcoin bull market, road to 100k, white cloth theory, check all of that out. All I'm doing is measuring time frames, bottoms to tops, approximately 57 weeks. We split that in half because that's what we do with our uh, prices as well. We work price and time, again, method, 50%, about 28 to 30 weeks. Measure 30 weeks across from the top of April. We're just gonna use this tool. So I'm doing this live so you can see it, obviously on a recorded video, but 30 weeks brings us out to about November, all right? That's not saying we go straight down for uh, half of that period. All I'm saying is potentially underneath the high of that period. Now we can break that down again and do half of 30, uh, 30 weeks, which gives us 15 weeks. We'll have to have some idea of times and prices and start to build a plan around this. They're not difficult things to do, but they're difficult things to implement regularly and consistently. 15 weeks takes us into 26th of July. So the old saying, sell in May, go away, looks like it stands true yet again. Selling in May would have been a fantastic idea, selling at the end of April or early May, and then just having a break from the market seemed like it would have been a fantastic idea. Now, in hindsight, there was signals to sell out mid to late April, and again, in early May. As I said, I didn't sell out of my entire portfolio, no. I consolidated, as I mentioned several times, because I don't want to be holding crappy small cryptos, which I, if I have a big position in them, through any sort of bear market. Smaller positions, which don't really affect my portfolio, different story. It's not going to affect me sleeping, and that's the main thing that I want to have is more sleep, because these markets get very tiring. So that's a look at the timeframes what potentially is happening next. We're getting our closes above the 50%. End of the week, we've got four days to go. So we really need to watch this $37,300 level at this point in time. So definitely keep an eye on that. That's gonna show whether we are still in a stronger bull market or we've got a longer recovery to go. Now, the last thing I wanted to discuss is Kathy Wood. So ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, who invests heavily into Tesla, says Bitcoin will still hit $500,000. This is posted 10 hours ago. so. Uh, this was, she was talking about this as the market was crashing. ARK Invest sees many similarities between this current capitulation and the COVID crash capitulation. So on a chart, this is what the COVID crash capitulation looked like straight down. We needed a few weeks to get back into our levels and then the market never saw those prices again. So if you're unfamiliar with Kathy Wood, ARK Invest CEO, check these videos out. Uh, uh, Ark, Kathy Wood says Bitcoin will still hit 500K. Their research team is looking very strong at this area. So that is a big one to go and check out. Bitcoin, so far, looking like the capitulation is, is done. Let's keep tracking it as we always do. If you found some value from the video, let me know, hit the like button down below. Bell notification icon after you've hit the subscribe button right now and I will catch you guys at the next video. Remember, we've got free newsletter down below that you can stay up to date with these crypto charts, stock market and property cycle. Property is not crashing as everyone believes. Everything is just enough to scare the weak hands out and then it genuinely moves without us. So keep that in mind, guys. I'll see you guys at the next video. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily Q&As. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.